the camera doesn't give this contraption justice right now. So real quick, before we start, I'd like everyone just to come on, come up and just come up and just touch this. Okay, cool. Just look at what we've got going on here. Now we're probably not, probably not getting this running today. I think some of my wires became disconnected, but this right here, this is our Arduino. This is a microcontroller, programmable microcontroller. They come in various sizes. Yes, and different models. This is an older one now. This was the newest, latest, but now it's older, so they have the uh, newer Arduino that's come out. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Raspberry Pi. No, yeah, this yeah. is still the latest Arduino. Uh, this is a breadboard, and the breadboard allows us to connect things uh, with these wires without having to solder stuff and make stuff permanent. You guys want to? Open up just a little bit so folk, other folks can come in and check it out. The camera's not so bad. It's not, it's not bad. that bad. Is that working? Yeah. Okay. I think All right. It's fine. Cool. Okay. But I'll still look. Yeah, take a look. I like that. Is that an LED type? It's, it's an light. LCD, yes. LCD. So I run an electronics hobbyist meetup, and the last project I did was to say the name of our meetup on that, and then I took a picture of it, and that became our header image. Nice. That felt pretty clever. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Sheet of paper and a pen. <laughs> Sorry. That's no fun. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Who brought uh, an Arduino with them? Okay, we have one. Also, I brought an Arduino with me. Um, I brought my kit, which normally is stocked full of all kinds of goodies, but I only had one Arduino, and luckily I found a cable that will connect to it. So today, we're not gonna be so hands-on, hands-on with the kits, but who has a laptop? Who brought a laptop with them? All right, let's pull those out because we're gonna do the next best thing and we're gonna virtualize what we're learning today. And so you'll be able to, to follow along, but it's all gonna be online. Yes. Okay, I love it when technology works for me and not against me. Okay, so we're gonna go to Tinkercad Dot com. It's T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D. I can write that up here. Unfortunately, I have terrible handwriting. It is though a chicken's claw is doing the writing for me. Tinkercad.com. Cool. It is, yes. All the walls in here except for the concrete you can write on. So we're going to tinkercad.com, T-I-N-K-E-R-C-A-D.com, and you're going to sign up for a free account. Create a personal account. And it shouldn't ask you for any kind of money. If it does, go back and create a student account. Tinkercad.com. So the cool thing about Tinkercad is it's made by Autodesk. Uh, it actually was inherited by Autodesk. And Autodesk is a 3D graphics company, they make 3D software, and you can also create 3D designs uh, in a limited version of, of their software. So in addition to creating circuits, we can do 3D stuff. They also have code blocks, so if you are wanting to do coding, you can actually learn, similar to Scratch, the block code. but for graphics, for 3D graphics. It's very cool, actually. All right, I'll give you guys a few more minutes to get set up. And if you've signed in and you've got your authorization all taken care of, you're gonna go to circuits right here, circuits. Bye. 
Ready? Everyone signed up? Tinkercad.com. All right, so let me just see eyeballs if you are signed up. If not, I'll assume, okay, we got one. Yes, yes. How about you guys? Good? You good? Signed up? Signed up? Awesome. All right, let's get started. So in circuits, we are going to create a new circuit. So this is probably going to be more of a Tinkercad <laughs> workshop than anything else. Uh, we do have the one Arduino. I would, I would love it if you, if you took some time to come up and, and take a look at it. When we first started, uh, folks kind of gathered around to, to take a look at it. Um, I'm just going to pull all these wires out that I so carefully connected. So this is the Arduino. Anyone have a, used to have an Android, uh, what was it, something for? This is what the camera constantly did while you were filming. I'll bet you that's what the camera that they used. Well, for... Positive thinking, yes. Okay. Let's just put it back to where it was. <laughs> okay. Oh, here, I'll do this. Close enough. Okay. This is what it looks like. It connects to a computer through a USB port. This blue cable, when you buy an Arduino, it usually comes with this blue cable. Uh, they are on Amazon, usually about 35 bucks. You can find them for cheaper than that, but usually it's just this is all you're getting. And so you've already, if you've already got one of these, then you're fine, you're good to go. You can also buy uh, Arduinos that come in kits with all kinds of delicious electronic goodies like these guys right here. Uh, and those things allow you to expand the interface and the operability of what your Arduino can do, how it can listen and how it can speak. By itself, it has one blinking light that you can control. That's the first thing that we're gonna learn how to do when we get into Tinker. Um, and the way it operates is there is a software program that comes from Arduino. It's free to download from arduino.cc, I believe is the website. And they have a ton of uh, example code in there and walkthroughs to show you how to connect things to your Arduino. Uh, it has these rails on either side um, that are just solderless connections. You just have these little jumper wires. And you can just pop them right in there and then connect this to something like a breadboard here, which is, allows you to connect things without having to solder them and make them permanent. So that breadboard can be re reused. And that's what's great about the Arduino too, is that when you're done, you can unplug everything and start over and create something new. So it is a microcontroller. The difference between a microcontroller and a computer is that the Arduino as a microcontroller only has basic input output functionality. A computer has the ability to spin up an operating system. It has a GPU that allows you to connect a computer monitor to it. The Arduino does not do that. The only, only thing you can do to interface is whatever you connect to it, you can tell that thing that you've connected to to do something, to represent something that's going on in here. Um, you can also read the serial output. So the series of numbers that, that Arduino creates depending on, uh, like if there's a sensor that you've got connected to it, that you're reading values from that sensor, those can be reported back to the computer. So it's really for hobbyists and it has a specific purpose and that is to do a lot of unique small space things that a big computer would be overkill for. So I'll give you an example, the robots that you guys saw out in the parking lot out there, right? 
Tons of Arduinos inside of those guys. Uh, Raspberry Pi is probably as well. Um, but for the small, small computers or small development type things, the Arduino is great because it's small, it's low power, runs off of five volts, and can do a lot of things very quickly. I wouldn't use it for computing. Yes, question? So I'm just wondering, like, would you use one of those to control like, one arm? Kind of thing on those outside it depends on how many articulations were in that arm. So if it was like an arm like, like the human arm, you would probably have, you could use one Arduino to control like several different motors. I believe there's 16 input output pins on this, but you can also multiplex those. The, the issue is that when you are trying to do things that are um, quick, so this has a low baud rate connection speed. And so controlling lots and lots of motors, especially motors that you have multiplexed, is gonna, it's gonna be slow. I wouldn't use it for you know, shooting laser beams at stuff, right? For ball sets. Yeah, exactly. You need something that's gonna be a little faster and you need to dedicate more Arduinos to you know, your array of, of servos that you're, you're using. Okay, cool. So I think everyone understands yes. No one's gonna say no, right? So you're all yes, so then I'll keep going. Excellent, I love it. So now we're gonna put this aside. Oh, I'm sorry, you know what? Let's, I'm gonna show you how this thing works and then we can, we can get into Tinker. So what I did is I loaded up the software so you guys can see it. I'm gonna close this thing. Goodbye. So here's the Arduino software. When you connect the Arduino to your computer, I'm hoping everyone is taking notes, but if not, there are tons of YouTube tutorials online. The very first thing that happens is your Arduino turns on because it is powered now. You can connect an external power source, um, and you will if you are running this in a device that's you know, running around on the floor, you've got a remote controlled car of some kind, you will definitely need to disconnect it um, and then you will connect its own power to it. But while it's connected to the computer, it's powered and this also allows us to communicate with the Arduino and to compile and send it code that it will run. Uh, for years and years, uh, C programming language has been the de facto standard. This is the C language right here. Who's ever written a program in C? Raise your hand. Awesome. My people, I love it. I myself am not a C expert, but I appreciate the uh, mind boggling complexity of it and the limitations that will pull, pull your hair out. So uh, if you've never programmed in C, there's two components in this scenario here. We have two functions. This first one is called our setup function. This function runs when the Arduino starts up. It is the first program or the first code that executes. And once that happens, it passes to the loop. This second function continues to go over, like its name, like a loop, over and over and over again. So imagine if you are wanting to blink lights, you would set, as we have in this code here, we're telling this connection, which we defined up here, which is the built-in built LED, we've told that thing to go high. What that means is that it's going to power that pin. It's going to raise the voltage on that pin to its highest level, which is, if, depending on how that LED is set up, it's either 3.3 or, or 5 volts. And then we delay for 500 milliseconds. So a half a second, we get a delay. And then we write again and we say that pin, we're gonna make low, which means turn the, vo the volume, turn the voltage off on that pin. That pin is connected to this blinking light on here. So if I want to make the light blinker, what do I do, blink faster, what do I do with these numbers? Bigger or smaller? Smaller, right? All right, let's try 200 and see what happens, okay? So I've written my code and nothing changes. Well, I have to send the code that's here in the computer in my, my text editor. It's gotta compile that and send it out to the Arduino. And the Arduino is always listening for those connections. So I do that with this button right up here. I upload my code to the Arduino. 
you can see it connecting and talking to it. Mm -hmm. Tells you what their maximum is. Now our light is blinking faster. Pretty dang ex Let's go faster. Yeah? Wow. Look at that blink happen. So when I first taught the Arduino uh, a couple years ago, it was for a summer camp that was, it was a tech summer camp here at, at, in one of the GeekWise classrooms, and it was through Fresno Housing. A lot of these kids have never even been to any kind of camp before, let alone done stuff that you know, was outside of, of their housing complex. And so when they got to play with the Arduinos and they made the lights blink, like I had, a, I had weeks of like really amazing, incredible, so we were gonna build robots, we we're gonna do all this cool stuff. All they wanted to do was blink lights. Like they were cannibalizing all of my kits, like pulling out as many leads. They were like daisy chaining their breadboards together so they could like have, and then I showed them how to do like the volume and make the lights blink with, according to the you know, intensity of the volume. And it was, it was over after that. It just blew their minds. But that's all they wanted to do. So you guys aren't as excited about it, but that's okay, whatever. All right, we'll do something else. Yes, yes you are. Okay, so that is the Arduino software in a nutshell right there. And while you're in the Arduino software, you have uh, built into it. Oop. Oh, I should probably talk about uh, connection and stuff like that. Okay, so you have these examples. And all of these are just code that depending on what like external devices you have connected to it, you can enable those and, and run against uh, those devices and, and allow them to do stuff. So like when I did my, um, well for the LCD, that was a different thing. I don't know if there's an LCD in here. Mm -mm. Nope. But for the bar graph, um, we could connect five LEDs um, into the, the sockets here or connect them to the breadboard and uh, we can make the, make the lights go up and down in a row based on, you know, we can connect a sensor to control that. Uh, we can use volume, we could use, uh, we could listen for temperature. Someone came up to me and said they created a temperature. Yes, that was very cool. So he created a, uh, using the LCD, and a temperature sensor, he was able to monitor the temperature and then output it on this device, on the LCD screen. It was a very cool project. Okay, sweet. So real quick technical stuff. If, uh, if you're just installing Arduino, or, or just installing the Arduino software and just connecting your Arduino, or if you haven't run it in a while, or if your computer power cycles, you'll have to connect, you have to do two things. Um, number one, you're going to have to make sure that the board is set correctly. Nine times out of 10, the Arduino software recognizes that it's a genuine Uno board or one of these other different uh, variations of the Arduino. There are a lot of Arduino manufacturers out there. It's open source, so they, anybody can, can make one. Um, but if it's kind of an off-brand and you know, they didn't adhere to some kind of specification in their naming convention, it might not show up in here. So that's why I like to buy the genuine, um, you know, Arduino board or buy them from Adafruit. Adafruit's a super re reputable company. And then secondly, you'll need to set this port. Uh, and, and once the Arduino is recognized, it will show up on these ports here. Back, who remembers serial ports back in the olden days, right? The RS-232 cable, right? setting jumpers to make sure our interrupts uh, were correct and not interrupting each other. Uh, this is all done through USB. It's all automatic now, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. There's not much to it. Okay, so those are the two things you need to do. You need to make sure your board is registered and make sure that you connect the, or choose the correct serial port. And you'll know because the, your Arduino's board name will be right there. Okay, awesome. All right, let's take it over to Tinkercad now. So in Tinkercad, you can create circuits. So I'll create a real basic circuit. You guys follow along with me. 
let's first let's grab an LED and we're going to drag it onto our workboard. And next up, I'm going to drag a 9 volt battery. No, good idea. So you can see that the uh, LED has an anode and a cathode. And then we have a positive and a negative on our 9 volt battery. Now while the battery, while, some, while you have a device selected, you can rotate it. It doesn't affect the operation of anything, but I'm just going to connect it right to that. I think it, is it backwards? All right, so let's start it and see what happens. Nothing happened. Why do you think it didn't happen? I don't think cathodes are swapped. That's right. We need to switch these guys around. So I can't flip the battery or the LED. So what I have to do is I have to draw wires. So I'm going to click when it shows the negative here. I'm going to click there. And there. So it rotate. Yes. Oh, it'll flip the direction. I don't know if you figure it, if you find out, let me know. That'll be super handy. All right, so I'm going to click over on the positive here. Cross these, you know, just so I'm not confusing anyone. We're going to go all the way around to the anode there. Okay, cool. So now when I start it, power is going to turn on. Boom. We got this little blast symbol there. So what happened was. 9 volt battery is too much for an LED. But I can add in a resistor. And a resistor allows us to drop some of that voltage across this resistor. There we go. And what's cool is that in Tinker, I can set the resistance. All right, so 300 ohms, and let's see what we get. Cool. I get a little warning there. It's probably telling me it's a little hot. So I'll stop the simulation. And we'll go back to 1,000 ohms. There we go. And that's it. So we created a circuit. So we have to stop the simulation. And then if you select the resistor, you get the options. You can also name the resistor if you want to. What the heck? Why did it say Bob Dilly? So Bob Dilly is a high school friend of mine. Uh, I don't, Bob Stam was a guy that worked at a company I worked at four companies ago. And I think that's Bobby from Fresno Housing. Isn't that weird? OK, have you guys ever had experienced this? Like you're talking about something, and then like within a couple hours, you get advertised for that thing? Yeah. Isn't that terrifying? Yeah. Yep. Privacy is dead. It is. It truly is. OK, cool. So the great thing about this is that had we directly connected our 9-volt battery to the LED in real life, we would have blown that LED and it would have been gone. But in Tinker, we get to test and find out what works and what doesn't work. Cool. So I'm going to scrap this. So question. Yes. As far as resistors go, mm -hmm. So it's a good question. In yes, there are different types of resistance uh, resistors. Um, there are low tolerance, high tolerance. Low tolerance means when I pick a resistor out and it tells me it's a hundred ohm, there's a twenty to twenty five percent chance that it's off by that by twenty or twenty five percent. High tolerance means I think it's like five to ten percent accurate. Um, and then you have these things called potentiometers, and th this is, which is a variable resistor, right? 
So inside, if you if we could break this thing apart, you would see here's our three pins, and then you have this. Think of it like a coil of wires going around the outside. So from here to here, if the potentiometer is, let's say it's 100K, from here to here is 100K. So across the outside pins, it is a 100K resistor. But inside here, you have this cool thing that's a dial, and it allows you to turn a swab. I'll use my pen as an example. And it kind of floats through all of this as you turn it. So when you start out here, the point from here to here, there is no resistance. So it's, it's almost a, uh, just a wire, right? Zero resistance. But as you move across, you're increasing the amount of resistive material. And for this one that's up on the screen, it's like a, a carbon mixture that's doped with, with some other stuff. Uh, back in the olden days, it was a rheostat. And it was actually literally a coil, coil of wire. Uh, they were big. Like in the old homes that have like dial or uh, dimmer switches for the lights, those are still a coil of wire in there. Anyway, so as I rotate, th rotate this around, right here at this point, from here to here, the circuit is half of this 100K resistor. So now this potentiometer across these two points is 50K, right? And then once I go all the way to, to this side, then from here to here, and remember the electricity is going, the, the electrons are going from here all the way here to this wiper and then back out here. So between these two points, it's gonna be 100K. Now, if I connect over here, now on this side, it's, it's zero again, because that goes right to there and it's just no resistance at all. But swiping back over here, now these guys are 100K and these two are zero. So that is a variable resistor. Okay, cool. Does that answer question? Probably way more detail than anybody wanted. I thought we were going to talk about Arduinos. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down here, and I have like quite a bit of stuff available to me. In fact, most of the items that you will get in a kit like one of these guys, you will, will show up over here in your components list. Like you've got ultrasonics, you've got photoresistors, uh, you've got uh, piezo elements. You can actually use a multimeter to test stuff. And these are just the basic components. If you want, you can click this drop down here and you can go to all. And then this list just goes on and on and on. Look, there's that LCD screen. So I'm going to go with the basic and I'm going to choose my Arduino. So everyone, let's drag your Arduino out onto the workboard. If you do a two finger swipe up, you will zoom in on it, on your trackpad, if you have a trackpad. Does anyone not have it? That's, every laptop has a trackpad now, right? Okay. Uh, most people, uh, like, a lot of people don't use them. Gotcha. So my work, uh, I work for Bitwise, and they got us new laptops. This is not the new laptop. This is old trusty here. Um, and they have the, you know, the bar at the top, the touchpad, touch bar at the top. And at first I thought it was pretty cool because like it's, it's a little screen, right? I love little screens, obviously. And so there's like the, the context constantly changes. Like it gives you new information and new kinds of cool stuff and, and the things you can touch. It's really, really awesome. The problem is that the length of my uh, ring and index or middle finger are perfectly over that piece of equipment. So much so that as I am typing, my fingers, if I don't lift my hand off of the keyboard, will constantly touch that bar. And depending on what programming I'm in, it feels like my computer is possessed. I mean, it's just absolutely maddening. And the, the frustrating one was, so I'll give you an example. So I'm. I'm giving a talk on user experience next in the theater. Um, I highly encourage you to, to uh, go, bring fruit, and throw it at me. It's going to be one of those kind of events. Um, and as I'm typing, the trackpad, or the, the, uh, the taskbar, whatever that thing is called, constantly was putting in a, um, what is it called? One of those, uh, like, 
It wasn't an emoji. It was, it was the, the checkbox or the, the radio box. It kept doing that for everything. And then if it wasn't doing that, it was constantly creating a brand new note. So I'd be typing and you know, looking around and you know, thinking. I don't, know. I don't know why I close my eyes. I don't, no one types with their eyes closed. But I'm thinking, and then all of a sudden, everything I'm working on just disappears. And that's frightening. It's absolutely terrifying when you have like weeks of work and it's just gone. But it's not gone. It's just uh, I've gone into a new note. And my old stuff is still there. Um, that was a great story. OK. <laughs> so uh, here's my Arduino. Notice the familiar board and cable. Yes. That is the reset button. And you've got one right here on your board. Uh, the reset button allows you to restart the Arduino without having to disconnect the power and reconnect the power. So it starts up that, that C code sequence. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click Start Simulation. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that power pop in. And we should have a blinky light. Yep, it's right there. Can you see it? OK. So I'm going to stop the simulation. And now I'm going to go to the code, and I'm going to see what kind of code is in there. That doesn't look like code. That looks like a bunch of little kid programming language. It is. It's block programming. It's Scratch. Uh, and Scratch is fun. I, I actually am uh, quite fond of Scratch. So <clears throat> if you don't want to program the Arduino in Scratch, or if you're just learning to program the Arduino, leave that there. Because you will be able to do all kinds of fun stuff with it without having to worry about where you're typing your code into. Is it, is it the, the loop block? Where, where am I putting my code into this thing? And everything is preset. So if you were to you know, turn the speaker off or print to the serial monitor, that would take a, a few lines of code that you'd have to copy and paste or type in from somewhere. And if you're not familiar with that code yet, um, this makes it easy to do. But we're going to just go ahead and, and move over from blocks to text. So that drop down right there where it says blocks, we're going to choose text. Are you sure? Yes, continue. So now we have our familiar C code uh, that we saw earlier. Here's our setup. <coughs> so by default, pin 13 is that internal blinky light. There is also, let's see if I can zoom in on this. There is also a, a connection here for 13. That is the same thing. So if you connect an LED to this guy right here, uh, it will blink at the same rate as whatever your uh, onboard LED blinks at. OK. So is everyone, I don't want to lose anyone. Is everyone here still? I mean, obviously you're here physically, but. Uh, on, on Tinker, is everyone that's following along cool? OK, sweet. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hide my code. I'm going to back out a little bit. And I'm going to drag in a breadboard, or attempt to drag in a breadboard. Cool. Now on the breadboard, if you've never used a breadboard before, understand that there, it's not just individual holes that do absolutely nothing. There are power rails and connection rails. So along this track right here, you can see when I hover over, see all those little dots line up as green or light up as green? Those are all connected internally. So if I connect something at one end and connect it at the other, they are connected behind the scenes inside of that breadboard. The same is true for that right here. So this is generally used as a power rail. So let's go ahead and bring in our 9-volt battery. Do you want to do 9 volts? Now let's do, yeah, we'll do 9 volts. Cool. All right, so connecting to the positive. We're going to do that. And then negative, we're going to go to ground. Cool. And one cool thing about Tinker is that when you select 
uh, the wire, you can actually change the color of it. Cool. All right. It is very helpful. So now I'm going to connect. This guy to ground. And this guy to five volts. Okay. Let's see what happens when we start our simulation. Uh, so we don't have to actually connect the 9 volt battery because it's already powered by the computer. So hey, delete all that. That never happened. All right, let's do something uh, actually useful. Uh, so I'm going to connect. I'm going to drag this servo motor out here. go to my Arduino. Where's the servo code? OK, so on the Arduino website, we can see some examples here. So here is one example that takes the control, which is the yellow. That goes to pin 9. You can barely see that there. And we're going to connect this. We'll go around the outside here. <laughs> Damn it. There we go. All right, that's connected to pin nine. It's like the long road there. Yeah. What's that? No, it doesn't. It doesn't affect anything. I like to kind of keep it organized. So yeah, I don't know what I was doing. Why was I connecting the 9-volt battery? Those are output pins. I mean, if you're going to disconnect our computer, wouldn't you want those? Yes. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to connect. So 5 volts is going to go to the middle guy there. And then our ground is going to go to right there. OK. So next up is the code. So this code will not control the servo motor as it is right now. But the Arduino here, website, gives us the ability to copy and paste that code. Let's just run it and see what happens. So does the simulation there automatically update the code? For, oh, that is really yes. wrong. Yes. Now, while, you're, while it's running, you can't update the code. You have to stop the simulation and then start it again. Usually, yeah. And there it is. Our servo is spinning back and forth. So uh, like we were talking about like articulating some kind of arm. Uh, so a servo motor uh, and stepper motors do two different things. Uh, stepper, motor is general, stepper motor is generally more powerful, and it rotates in steps. But it also can continuously rotate around and around and around. Servo motor 
will only go through 350 degrees of rotation and then it has to go back around the other direction. But you can give it a, like an analog value of like a position to go to and it will stop and go to that. Whereas with a servo motor, you have to count the steps, or the stepper motor, you have to count the steps to get to whatever rotation you're going to. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's a good place to pause or stop because we're done at 3.30, right? We have eight minutes left. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Cool. Was it, yes, question. Not much. Still, still totally good. Yep, still totally good. Uh, they try not to modify the architecture too much and add too many things. Yeah. The only thing that you'll find is that if the newer Arduinos have things that the older Arduino doesn't have, you just won't be able to run that part of the code. Like, what would they have? Uh, like if they have built-in sensors of any kind. Oh. Yeah. I think the newer ones do, yeah. This one does not. This is an older one. But you were able to, yeah, code that, that worked six years ago will generally work the same in Arduinos today. They have not changed that much in that, that period of time. Cool, any other questions? Good, okay, thank you. Was this helpful? Yeah. All right. Thank you guys, appreciate it.